tube, uh, lamp, a double layer tube that had coolant um, reactant on the ID and then coolant in the channel. So what do you suppose happened when they put it in the sequence? It, so is that a big deal? And we found out all kinds of other stuff because we were late in building this that uh, they, the, 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 the customer was the Japanese federal government. There was a sub, Japanese sub, an American sub, and we were a fourth level sub. So at this level, one above us, they were paying a penalty, no, two of us, because the Japanese sub was paying a penalty of $27,000 per day for late delivery. And I, we also found out we, at the level we were at, there was 10 different companies working on these parts. So they were very difficult to build. The reason there was 10 is because they, they ordered them from one, and these guys didn't deliver, and then they ordered from another, ordered from another. Pretty soon they were ordering five at a time to try and get this really difficult part built. We were the first ones to get it built. Um, we got paid. But we found out all this information in the meantime, how, how critical this was. So then when, when that failed, they were already on these penalties and now they've got a broken part and no design that's gonna work. So what do you suppose their reaction was? Anyway, if, if, you, were, if you were that sub that was paying $27,000 a day and you just you had orders out through another sub to 10 people, one company delivers and the part breaks, what do you do? That's the one you got, just got it from my broke scrap. Yeah. Well, the first thing they do is they come back on us, your part broke. And then I immediately fired back my email and said, I told you it was going to break. So then what do you do? You fire a bunch of people. And, and that does happen. And um, that, they would have been fired in America. And from my understanding, Japanese companies are a little less forgiving. But the other really cool thing for us is they said, hey, you guys said it was gonna break and you were the first and only company to deliver. Can you bail us out here? And, and then what we do is we say, we'll try. So then we order type O material, go through the same build process, which by the way, we're forming and particularly the forming of annealed material is much easier than hardened material. So we, we do that, we, and then when everything's said and done, we send it out, get it, get it hardened, bring it back in, get it anodized, and then now the thing was hardened after weld, so now the whole thing is T6, it stands up to their conditions. And do you, here's the question, do you think we told anybody what we did? No. But what we did do is we increased our price by, I think we went up three times. We made money on the first one. But then now it's like, well, we can charge anything we want. Because we know they're desperate. They told us about all these penalties. They, they told us all this information, which they probably shouldn't have. But they, when they were telling us, they're like, you guys got to hurry up. What's wrong with you? We're paying all these penalties. Well, now we know that. We know they're desperate. And we, and we know nobody else can deliver them. So we can charge them whatever we want. So we tripled our price, and we've got orders for like 10 more in the next month. Anyway. Moral to the story is, you can be that engineer who pays attention to their materials. That was a really a simple problem, right? But in order to solve it, you just got to pay attention. So at this level, I'm really a jerk about that stuff. So whether you bring a project in or whether you're putting it on a print, it's got to be a realistic material. I'm also pretty good at finding mistakes in there. So anyway, that's why that's important. It won't be hard. Follows websites and we'll be there to help you. Okay, the title block must be complete. Um, part number, your name, materials, uh, your tolerances. A lot of times been in there. We'll go over that more. And application of your marketing skills. <laughs> Specifically, if we see some really spectacular posters, um, well, yeah, it's a great, it's a very if we, I expect to see an improvement in this area because we're offering training in this area. If we see um, nice, well thought out marketing plans and good graphics, marketing tools, 
you're gonna, that's going to be reflected in your brand. And effective use of graphic design and concepting marketing and communication. So that's the grade. That is how you will be great, absolutely. And by the way, your grade for these two projects is roughly 50 to 60%, probably 60% of your grades. So this, this is important. Okay, brief <coughs> making. Every feature must be dimension intolerance. Material call out controls some dimensions. I'll go over that in next week. Block tolerance, linear tolerance, and GDT. I'll review all four of those next week. Um, one possible interpretation no conflicts. I'll go over that next week. Um, but I'm putting it here because it's going to be part of your grade. Um, should not have to use a calculator at build. Title block control document would complete the information. Dimensions should correlate uh, with build method and measurement methods while meeting function. Concurrent engineering, i.e. cannot tell you the correct way to dimension each print. I can't say, always do this or always do that. You gotta think about how you're gonna build it and how you're gonna use it. Um, part design, parts based on the parts and machines we have trained or recommended for the individual project, so for the DFM folks, you're going to be able to top and a soft jaw, and you're going to be kind of familiar with those parts. I would recommend you making your individual parts similar to those, so at least you'll have an idea about the build, the, about the build process. That's going to help you. Um, so those materials that we're used to working with are one inch aluminum rod, quarter inch aluminum rod, one by two aluminum bar, half by two aluminum bar, and, three, and then 3D printed parts for the, for the folks in the virtual design side. Um, anything that's dramatically different from this on the individual side, just ask. It doesn't mean you can't do it like some guys did uh, idler wheels for their compound bowl. That's fine, but just check with this and we'll talk about some of the issues. Soft jaws picturing will be available. You'll learn more about that as we go on. Try to use the standard tool. Okay, this is, I've, I've mentioned this. Uh, we don't expect you to build, we don't really expect to build any of the individual projects. We do, we probably will build some, build some. We build as, we'll try to focus on building the group projects. We'll build as many as we can, but we probably aren't going to build them all. Um, you can use the VMC or the track blade for the individuals, not the, or for the group, not the individuals. Um, the, the build of the group projects will depend upon the completeness of the project packet, available machine time, and really how bad you guys want. Some people don't want to build at all, and that's fine. And key, build is not required, will not affect your Okay, so this is an example of the work order. And the key here is a couple things. All this sort of title block information is filled in up here, but down here, oops, right here, the, the description, your plan of how you're gonna build it, that is the most important part. And there is not a right or a wrong answer. But it's important that you get that down there because when you bring something into us, it's a starting point. It's a point for us to go to have an idea of what you plan on doing. Then we can say, well, this won't work. And then, hey, that's a great idea. Just so we know where you're at. So that's the most important part of this page. There are two more pages. The second page is just putting in your machine times and using that to calculate, to calculate your cost. The third page is a procedure on how to fill out the first two pages. You don't have to turn in the third page. There's also a fourth page, which is standard drills. But you don't. You can use that if you want. Not very good. So these two pages. That's part of what you're going to be graded. Have to turn those in. That that's an Excel spreadsheet that's available on the app. Here is an example of what would be a fantastic individual project. This is something all the DFM folks will be building in the next few weeks. It's part of the top. And it contains, you know, title block information, dimensions. It's a relatively simple part, but it really makes you, makes it plausible for even a first-time SolidWorks user to go through and get this thing complete. Okay. Here is the feeds and speeds. You guys, I, I introduced that last week. Here is a screw chart. I'll talk about that in a couple of weeks. Okay, now I'm just going to look at some examples. And I'll just kind of tell you what they are and maybe why I liked them or why I didn't. This was a 3D printed part. And this is one of those examples where it would be really hard to dimension all those. It's possible. It's possible. But we didn't, I don't think we even made him dimension all those parts. This guy built this, uh, he actually built this as an individual project. That piece right there, which is a 
new school. <coughs> he had exceptional machining skills. I guess that's why I got it. This was a really cool individual project. Relatively easy to dimension, right? Um, I don't have the print here, but it's it's a cube, and it, it's he's dimensioning a cube, and then he's dimensioning a hole that is repeated six times. So it was a relatively easy project. He did a great job of explaining, because what gets hard on this one is the work order, right? Because you kind of have to explain how you're going to fixture it, things like that. But he did a great job from beginning to end, and he built it. This was another individual project. Um, the print was a little more than what I would expect as an individual project, but he did it. So this was the snowmobile, and the, and the 3D printed part on the right was an individual project. And we'll get back to why the relevance of that in a second. So for the, for the individual project, he did the complete print, way beyond <coughs> what I would expect, but he did a fine job of it, so, so we did. This was also an individual project. And this is a great example of where, can you imagine the dimensioning every, dimensioning and tolerancing every feature on that part? It wouldn't make sense. This is one where you work off the model. And in the print, we will put a statement that says, this geometry, maybe there's certain things we want dimension and tolerance, but for most of it, we say part geometry from solid model within a tolerance of, Twenty thousand. So that was a really cool project. She did. She did again a great job of getting her work order in. Okay. So here's some group projects. Okay. So you see this piece is repeated down. He used this piece, and then as a group they did an assembly print and this print. He fixed all the problems with this print because there was he lost some points as the individual. But then when he got with the group, he fixed those. They came up with this one. They did an assembly print, and then they went ahead and built them all. So they had work orders for both pieces. And there was, there's other little pieces in here which you can't really see. Yes, I know exactly what it is. You, you know, it, does anybody else in here know? He's explained it to me. Is it recognizable to anybody? It, it is part of a gun. In, some action figure, and he, he had the thing that was this tall, and he was basically making something like this tall. And he's still working on it. He just keeps making more parts to it. So yeah, that's going to be pretty cool. And then this, he has this paint job on here. He did a real talented guy. Now this one, so you guess what that might be? I heard it. It's a chest. So now, again, a good reason where, like, let's say if you're individual, how many pieces are there in a chess set? How many unique pieces? Six different, Six different pieces. So if you have five guys in your group, or five individuals, five students, so you could have individual, pro individual projects that were one, you know, were one piece of a chess set, and then the group project might be the assembly. And that's, they didn't really, it didn't work out like that because because of the way I assigned the project last time. The one student had that mind that he, I'm going to do a chess set and I am going to do, I think he did the knight or something for his individual. Then they turned right around and did the rest of them as their group. And he convinced the rest of the group that that was a good idea to take his, well, that's part of the reason why we were assigning them together. Now you guys can work that out beforehand. And they've gotten as far as the pawns. They're still working on it. Yes. And everybody gets set. Well, that was the plan. <laughs> um, David Roth works for me, and he's built all these, and he's he's building the rest of them. And he was part of that group. And it wasn't even his idea to build these, but he's been the only one who's been running the lathe. Um, so, and I, they, he was good. As you can see, there's more pawns here already than he needs. And he was just running pawns, and I said, well, those other guys aren't coming in, so just switch to the next piece, and if one of them comes in later and wants to build a set, you'll have all the programs set. That, and they had actually designed this whole thing. Their original project was on the manual lathe. And um, after, and we, I graded the whole thing, and, and they did great, but then I said, I mean, and then there was only like a week of school left, and I said, you know, if you're going to do this, you should do it on the CNC because you have a lot of pieces. And so 
So basically, David turned around and learned how to run the CNC lathe with a little help from Derek, and they started making parts. So how long do you think one of these takes on the CNC lathe? 25 minutes. Three minutes. And they just fly off. So it's not that big a deal. And those other guys, if they, if they come in next semester and want them, we'll be happy to let them run their parts. But you know, that's kind of the point is you get something cool maybe out of your project, but we want you to learn a little bit of the process. And they, that was a great group though. They definitely learned a lot. Okay, this was another group project where somebody built that tool stand. They designed, you know, so it's an assembly, three different print, three different individual prints, and then an assembly with some bolts. Nice, real nice project. And then they got it built. This one, um, and actually they did this on the Haas, so they did all that master cam, CNC work. This was a great example of CNC work. These guys designed, they designed, one of them had designed the, the uh, connecting rod as an individual project, which again was way more than I would expect, and, but that's great, he did a good job on it. And then they turned around and for their group project, they designed, they had to design those soft jobs to fixture them. <coughs> so um, you can imagine, and I think I'll use this as an example when I cover master cam, but that would be hard. Okay, we start out with a square block and you can kind of see on this end right here, it's just square corners, right? So we drop a square block in there and then we machine this into the top half of the square block and we flip it over here, machine the rest of the block and then machine the other side. But you have to design this fixture to hold these things. And these soft jaws, you will all uh, be intimately familiar with those in a week, or the ones at DFM folks, because you will build one. That's the mill lab. You build a blank soft jaw. So they had designed the fixture and do the master cam on it. So a real cool project. Okay, so this was the individual, or the group project, where we saw that 3D printed part earlier. Then they went ahead in their individual project um, Andy convinced everybody else in his group that his individual project should be the group project, and then they built these <clears throat> aluminum uprights. So they had, uh, they already had the print, they had to be the fixed string and the master. Well, I think that's it. So <clears throat> I don't want anybody to think that if you don't do design and build a connecting rod or a, or a snowmobile part that you're going to do poorly. It's about the process. You are going to be graded on the process. And that's why the individual project, I really want those projects to be simple. So people really nail that. You get your group project, do something a little more elaborate, a little more fun, and demonstrate your ability to be a mechanical engineer, demonstrate your creativity, and have a good time. And that's kind of the whole idea. And, and you'll end up learning probably way more than your one credit's worth. But Again, you're graded, you're graded on those few details that I outlined in the accuracy. Any questions? Right, see you guys this week.